So what is it that Ash is, what is it that Intrepid Studios is doing that inspires you, that makes you feel comfortable? And um, you'd comment, but NDA? Um, okay, well, comment something that's not NDA. The thing I'm going to tell you is, um, where the hell are the bears? Yes, look at that. Look at all of those sexy bears. Um, that is 5,000 bears. That is, that is 5,000 bears, folks. Um, Steven accidentally summoned 5,000 bears during testing. Let me tell you, the fact that the servers didn't catch on fire um, is a really good sign. That is a really, really, really good sign that you can, um, that, that you can summon 5,000 additional assets, um, in the server, not explode. That, that is huge. That is huge. Let's see. Uh, they are trying to invent something new as many MMOs haven't done in ages. That is true. Um, Ashes of Creation is trying to do something new, which isn't a... I hate the phrase WoW clone because not every... Not every single new MMO is a WoW clone because WoW didn't... WoW didn't originate or it wasn't the originator of a lot of the things that WoW gets credit for. WoW just made them mainstream. So a game that's trying to do something new yeah, 100%. Steven publicly tells everyone, we don't need your money. We just want more PR. We'll make the game, and all you have to do is watch and get the word out. You know, Immortality, that is probably in the top five, without a doubt, of things that I've seen Steven say or seen any CEO say that really makes the difference in a, um, that really makes a difference in the faith you have in a company. The fact that the owner of the company says, don't give me any money unless you're satisfied, unless you're convinced. Most of these other companies, and that is why I will tell you, Steven responded very, very quickly to the things about the website. Because remember I said, it's one, if the owner says, if the owner says, don't give me any money unless you're convinced, then that is the mantra. That is the battle rhythm. That is the vision. That is the destination that the whole company should take on. So when the owner of the company says, don't give me any money unless you're convinced, and then the new website rolls out and it's got this special offer marketing buzzword bingo on it, and then it immediately changes within like 48 hours, that's that's saying something about the company. That's like, hey, you need, you my, it's my vision. Your job is to execute my vision. You can feel free to talk to me and get me to change the vision, but you execute my vision. So I applauded them for that. I'm very excited about the promise of a real and meaningful economy. It's a rare sight in MMOs these days. I really like the thought that even base gathering materials will have a value throughout the game due to the item deterioration system. It sounds like they've actually thought about how items and systems can play off each other to mean something instead of just be systems of their own. Yes, yes. One of the big things that Intrepid has done is keeping low-level items relevant. Um, and if if they nail this, if they nail this, right? Um, keeping low-level items relevant is so important for the economy. Um, EVE Online has nine, I believe if I remember correctly, nine base elements. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're building in EVE Online. There is Veldspar in it somewhere. There is Tritanium in it somewhere. Uh, you can't you can't build anything in EVE Online without Tritanium being in it. it. It might not be in... You might be the guy that's using uh, second order materials to make a third order material. However... Somebody at some point built the item you're using. Even Line has a very intricate and realistic logistic system for their manufacturing. They don't even call it a crafting system. They call it a manufacturing system. So Eve Online gets it done. Uh, will this game release before 2025? Before 2025, uh, almost certainly. Almost certainly. They're showing actual gameplay. Other than that, it's their promise not to implement P pay to win and not be a PVE theme park. You know, that's the interesting thing. I did um I did that video on monster coins, and some people 
some people are getting kind of out there on their responses, and that's okay. I want you out there on the on the responses. I actually wrote a response um, earlier today about that. The reason why it's important for people to keep it um, keep it in line. Are monster coins pay to win? And that's the question we asked last week in that video. Monster coins are a feature that Intrepid Studios talked about in 2017, and they have not detailed much since. It is true that monster coins are available in the cash shop, and there may be some scenarios where they may carry a pay-to-win aspect to them. In fairness to Intrepid, this discussion, this, this discussion has only just begun, and they have not had a chance to respond. Previously, they have said, we are very aware that systems, that systems, if they can be gamed, they will be gamed, and we're going to make sure to develop the monster coin system so there is no potential gaming there. So, sure, it, some people say to me, well, you're just stirring the pot. I'm not stirring the pot. I'm pointing out issues that a lot of people have said, a lot of people have had, and I don't keep anything underneath the, the carpet. I don't turn the light so that you can't see into that corner. I don't have dark corners around here. I got, I got big panel lights. I got light in the back. We make sure everything is bright. And I... I think it's unfair to Shanghai or sideswipe or ambush a creative director two and a half years later. It also is a double-edged sword. Just like Steven says, the double-edged sword of transparency. I'm the double-edged sword of content creation because I produce a lot of content. I bring a lot of things to the forefront. I put a lot of things on Steven's radar, but I also take away his excuse two years down the road. Oh, well, we weren't aware. Um, well, what do you mean you weren't aware? There's a 30 minute video. There's 250 comments on that 30 minute video. How, how are you not aware? Uh, somebody says that the monthly price is an honest business model, acknowledging in-game achievements and making them difficult. Gaming is a challenge, just not casual playing. I agree with all of that. Um, that's why I'm doing the video over the weekend. I don't want to talk too much about the business model today because I'm doing the video over the weekend and I'm going to talk about their business model and then that'll be a segment next week. Um, most people in their twenties grew up in wow. So that's what they know. Most gamers in their twenties grew up with wow. That's fair. Um, my narcissist, if start my narcissistic faith in my own instincts and my instincts tell me about the genuine love and passion Steven has for the game. Unlike almost every other large MMORPG out there ruled by corporate overlords. My instinct tells me that Steven cares first and foremost about the game. The money Intrepid makes and any profit he'll eventually make is like a side benefit for him. He just wants enough money to let them keep running the game. So yeah, this is the piece. Um, this is the piece that people don't get. And they get mad about this because they don't understand the rules and laws of business. Publicly traded companies have an obligation to one group of people, the shareholders. BioWare, EA, CD Projekt Red, Activision, uh, none of these companies have an obligation to you as a customer. I know that you feel that they should. But the obligation that those companies have is to their shareholders. So if I can sell, if I'm a publicly traded company, right? I don't want to pull all the crap out of there. If I'm a publicly traded company, right? And I can sell an item, then I have an obligation to my shareholders to sell that item and to make as much money. So I want people to wear their damn mask. So I went out and I found the place that I can get really nice chibi masks. They're really comfortable. They're breathable. I love them. Uh, the thing is, is that I sell them for almost no profit. Some of the items on my Teespring store, I sell for a markup. Some of the items I sell for almost no profit. The Timmy shirts, no profit. The masks, minimum profit. Um, the thing with that is, boom. Aw, sad cat. Have a hat. Um, the big part of that is a publicly traded company wouldn't be able to sell those masks at $9.99 if they had data in hand telling them that they could sell them for $11.99. I can sell 1 million masks at 
I can sell 990,000 masks at 1199. They are they are beholden to sell those masks for 1199 because the profit will be more. They're beholden to make as much money as they can for their shareholders. So it it sucks, but that's kind of the rules of the game. Uh been playing, let's see. Been playing classic EverQuest on P99 for a year now and can say with confidence pretty much everything in WoW came from EQ. WoW just had a much better polish and accessibility. Most things in WoW came from EQ. There was also a little bit that came from Lineage, the original, a little bit that came from Final Fantasy um, 11, a little bit that came from Ultima Online. So mostly, though, mostly the big MMOs that were out, WoW looked at those and said, what do people like? I like the responsiveness to the player feedback. Yes, Intrepid is very, very responsive to player feedback. Case in point, the fireball changed while still in active development. They wanted to get the fireball changed before they ever went into alpha. The fact that Steven seems like a down-to-earth and approachable guy despite being rich makes the idea of the game becoming a thing much more realistic. You know, that's a really that's a really strong point. I really do like the fact that Steven um, went out outside of his comfort zone. Uh, Steven's not just like He's not just throwing money at a project and saying, where's the project? Where's He's actually in there up to his elbows. I think Steven is getting the best education he ever can. And you're going to appreciate Steven a whole lot more. Dude doesn't even take a paycheck. Works 16 to 18 hours a day and he's not taking a paycheck. When he's not feeding the ducks, that's right. Uh, let's see. I want a PvE MMO where others who want to fight with politics can do so without me forced to do it. Okay. Um, not quite sure there. Would it be odd for him to pay himself? It would be a little odd for him to pay himself, but not in regards to uh, him paying himself. It would be odd because he would be triple taxing his own money. Putting the game mechanics aside, what convinces me to stick around with Ashes is how professional the whole company looks. Even during their early days, while they had made mistakes, they're far more presentable as a company than other crowdfunded MMOs. They have a lot of experienced employees in the company. If Steven does not have a great vision, those people wouldn't be there. The core intrepid members wouldn't want to risk destroying their whole career if it's one elaborate scam. That is probably the, the most enlightened and logical statement you can make and it's one that people don't understand look at the people who work in intrepid studios it's not like they're all dinosaurs right it's not like they're all dinosaurs and they're getting ready to retire and they're looking for one more cash grab they're looking for one more payday there's a lot of young and upcoming people at intrepid studios and if intrepid studios wasn't 100 legit you wouldn't you would have people your their turnover rate would be a lot more than I want to say like right around the 10% mark. I haven't done the math exactly uh in about a year. But they were well under the 10% mark the last time I did. If your company has a 10% turnover rate, that's not something to be worried about despite what some people on the internet might start panicking about. Their, a turnover rate of 10% is actually really, really low. People just go on to new things. Like, you're going to lose people. Um, you're going to lose people at your company simply because the fact you they get a couple of years experience and then um, uh, somebody else is going to offer them more money and they're going to offer them money that you can't offer because you're... So say you have one lead, three seniors, uh, five just no titles, and three juniors. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, you have a 12 person division or 12 person branch. Your three junior people, they took the junior position because they're brand new, they're fresh out of college. They they need to get an entry level job because they need to get resume experience. The problem is, is that when they have that two to three years experience or that, that one to two years experience, now they're qualified to start applying at other companies, not for senior positions, but for not junior positions. Well, you might want to keep that person on your team, but the problem is, is you've allotted however many thousands, tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars for payroll 
for that branch because that branch has a function. And you can't just give all, like people get this into their head. And we're, sorry, guys, we got to go down a business rabbit hole real quick. Let me, in fact, let me Bob Ross this up because I, I want people to, I want people to see that you can't just arbitrarily decide that you're going to start paying. Like everyone's like, oh, well, they should get a raise. So you've got your top person, right? And then you've got three of these guys, right? You got three senior people, right? And now we're just going to do a random, we're going to do a one junior to one senior because this is called development, right? And then we have five people. So we got one, two, three, four. And this guy only has one. It, shit. Let's just make it, let's just make it balanced. Let's just make it six. Let's so that we don't have to go into exceptions and pay and why this person. So you have, you have three standard chains of command here, right? And so this is your lead. These are your senior people. These are your junior people. And these are just whatever that function is. This entire thing, right, is a branch. And this brings a certain uh, capability and it brings a certain function. And it also gives you that at X, 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 X a year, maybe an extra X right there for however much this costs. Now, uh, if this person came out of college, zero years experience, right? And they worked here for two years. Now this person's looking for upward mobility, but nobody's left. Nobody's left the company. So there is no upward mobility. Uh, there is no upward mobility for you here. They can't just give this person a raise they can't just promote this person to the same pay rate as this because they get the same capability and function for this amount of money. That's what people don't understand. If nobody leaves, if nobody leaves the company, then there's no upward mobility. I think I, I truly believe this. If people wanted to understand how raises work. Every single American should have to serve for four years in the military reserves because in the military, in the, in the military, you can earn rank because there, there's a, 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 a national pool of positions in the reserves. You can't make rank unless your unit has an opening that you can promote into. So you get the whole thing where people jump reserve unit to reserve unit so they could make rank. And then as soon as they have the rank, they put in an application a return to their home unit, the one that's near their house so that they can eventually come home. But sometimes they're waiting five years uh, people and it's, it's morbid, but sometimes you're waiting for somebody to retire or to die and Oh shit person died. And then, oh, well, I can get promoted. Why not just give the whole branch? Why not just get the whole branch to earn more? Then XX dollars can be used to pay said raise. Um, because this branch has zero income. This branch doesn't earn more. This branch is a branch that gives you a capability or a function, but it itself doesn't make the company money. If this is your art team, right? Then your art team doesn't actually independently bring in money. It's a cost center. Um, yes, it absolutely is. You jet you internally. And then this is weird. If this is one of your divisions in your company, then you as the company owner are the customer. You as the company are, are the customer, so you're buying capability from them. They get their money to run that branch from you as the, as the owner of the company, but they don't have any independent outside income, so you can't just say, well, why can't they make more money? Uh, because they don't, they don't have a function external to the customer. Maybe not art. Other companies can sell skins for characters, skins for guns. Again, that that division isn't interfacing with the customer. The sales department is. And, and again, okay, so I'm going to take this off the screen, right? Because the, 
Maybe you mean other features like multiplayer or something. That you're 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 looking at this as this produces anything that you can sell. The company as a whole, the company as a whole has multiple of those teams. Company as a whole has multiple, multiple teams, right? And those teams together, these team uh, that's not what I wanted to do. These teams serve a function. And each one of these teams is feeding the main product, right? Each one of these teams feeds the main product. The main product is what goes out the door to the customer and what generates money. No, in, no one of these teams independently makes money. The product overall makes money. So you give the cut of money, this is 10%, this is 20%, this is 10%, so 20, 30, 40, uh, 50. So this is 90, uh, we'll say this is 7%, and this is 3%. This is customer service. You know, this is engineering, or this is engineering and design. And then this would probably be split out into two things. You know, this is concept art. This is animation. This is uh, character art. You probably would have all of those in a in a division art and animation it all depends on how you have things set up but you, you only have x number of percent of money to give to them the art team can't just the art team can't just start generating their own independent money now are there ways are there ways that intrepid could increase their income Are there ways that Intrepid could increase their income and buy more capability? Yes. Um, if you're not going to do your own merchandise, uh, I will tell you this, okay, this is pretty satisfactory. I was pretty, I'm pretty happy with this. It's the same, it's the same style hoodie that Intrepid made. The only thing I wasn't satisfied, and it was my own design fault. The only I wasn't satisfied with the printing on the front, but I also printed it kind of small. So I took the steampunk sniper logo off of it, stop, and I uh, I made it bigger so it prints better. Shameless plug there. Oh, absolutely. Down below, my merch is down there. Plus twenty ounce tumbler. I can't wait to get that to show it off. Stop it. I'm gonna show you off. I showed off a sweatshirt. I will show off a cat. No, but, um, they could very, I, and I, I, the next time I talk to Steven, I'm going to sit him down and I'm going to say, look, um, I, I'm, I'm going to be Luna from, uh, I'm going to be Luna from Harry Potter, uh, uh Deathly Hollows part two. And I'm going to say, Harry Potter, you listen to me right now. People are begging, dying, salivating, chomping at the bit. Get your merchandise set up. But just use Teespring. Why do you want? Why do you want to endure the ass pain? Why do you want to endure the ass pain of fucking around with in-house merch? Fuck, fuck in-house merch. Go to Teespring. They they can and should have their Teespring shop set up in a weekend. In a fucking weekend, they could be making. Shit tons of money because people want merchant. People want Ashes of Creation merchandise. You can do hats. You can do beanies. You can do pins, keychains, stickers, cups, mugs, masks, tumblers, sweatshirts, hoodies, long sleeves, short sleeves. Shit, man. Bags, fanny packs, wall art. Why? Why would you not? Why would you not be selling merchandise when it would fucking print like hotcakes? Hot cakes. Shit. Give, give me a licensing deal. Let me set it all up. I will set that shit up right now if I get a licensing deal. Um, if I get a licensing deal and I keep a percentage. I mean, why would you really want to be selling merch before the game even comes out? Because the people want it. Because people want it. Uh-oh. 
You should do a poll on how many people actually buy merch. I don't need to. How do I know people want it? Here's how I know people want it. Because in, in oh, look at that. Sad cat. I'm going to get a hat. In the last six months, in the last six months, I have talked to over 28,000 people. I have spoken to over 28,000 people about Ashes of Creation. So that is not, if I say, when, when somebody makes a statement, I've talked to a bunch of people. That's anecdotal evidence. Anecdotal evidence isn't evidence. It's observations in the baseline for somebody to form a subject matter expert opinion. However, I have, I can give you empirical data that I've spoken to over 28,000 people about Ashes of Creation, and I can tell you the things that they want. They want merchandise, and they want Alpha One sells back. Grumpy Old Man also says if you outsource it, there's no risk. I, I will say there's no risk, and there's very little cost. Uh, there's very little cost considering the fact that you own a fucking art department. Okay, you own an art department. All you got to do is go and get the templates, download the templates, decide which which merch you want. Wall scrolls, hoodies, t-shirts, hats. There is a there's a $5 fee for hats. Um there's a $5 fee for hats. Um if they outsourced it, how much percentage would Intrepid get from it roughly? Um Intrepid can set their prices so they um uh I mean, uh, it's not about a matter of per, of percentage. Uh, even if they if they went with somebody like Teespring, they would be making significant, significant um, amount of dollars per item. I will say significant. Um, usually, when you use a third party vendor, your your the, the the amount of money you make on a T shirt is like two bucks. Um, it's like two bucks. I can tell you right now with Teespring, you can make as much as like six bucks and uh, still keep the item reasonably priced. I say, Sprocket, we've reached the end of another video. Time to thank the sponsors. Yes, that will do, that will do. Shall we pop off for a sport of tea?